Hello, my name is Pauline Slot and I work as an assistant professor at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. And my work, my research and also my teaching is mainly focused on early childhood education, the quality of early childhood education, and specifically also related to issues of diversity and promoting inclusiveness. So we see increasing diversity in uh, early childhood classrooms and this diversity actually reflects different aspects. So this can reflect a diversity in terms of uh, the cultural background of children, of families, the ethnic background, um, but maybe the language that they speak at home, but also the family composition. So having uh, one parent families versus two parent families, for instance, having same sex parents, and of course, the diversity also reflects uh, the diversity of needs that children can have. So uh, in terms of what they need to thrive and to develop, but maybe also in terms of um, well, physical needs uh, uh, or health needs. So considering this uh, great diversity in, in the classrooms, it means that the teachers or caregivers have to address all these differing needs in the classrooms. And this can, uh, well, can be challenging sometimes. So it can be challenging maybe to identify what it is that children or families actually need, or it can be challenging because you have so many different needs within the classroom. And that's why it's important to have a good understanding of uh, the child and how the child is developing, but also uh, the family background and uh, the kind of um, family context the child is growing up in. Given the different uh, languages and cultures that uh, children may have in, in the classroom, I think two things are important. I think on the one hand, um, it's important to in enhance children's understanding about how people may differ um, and how... Uh, aspects of the maybe the family environment may differ but i think more importantly um, we should also talk about similarities between people it's important to acknowledge that children uh, especially in a young age are really very much focused on uh, identifying uh, characteristics in people and maybe also categorizing um, so it's also important to address what are the similarities between people so uh, maybe addressing similarities in terms of a children's interests, what they like to do or what kind of toys they like to play with. Um, and I think we should keep in mind that we, are, uh, we should be very open uh, as adults in talking with children and without judgment, because uh, some of the, the issues that children may bring across or some of the questions that they may ask um, are, um, well, really very uh, uh, legitimate questions and questions that come from curiosity. The classroom should be a very safe space and an inclusive space for every child and every family. So that means that in, um, in thinking about uh, the furnishing and thinking about the equipment and also the, the, the materials and the toys that you have in a classroom, that it's important that children can recognize themselves or can recognize elements of uh, their home environment, for instance, or the, uh, the cultural background that they have, uh, but also the languages that they speak. So uh, try and have uh, books in different languages, for instance, to make sure that uh, parents also find uh, the books in their language that they can read to children or, for instance, having books without any letters in them, without any print. What we learned from a study with young children is that for them, it's very important that they find uh, a, a safe space for themselves, but also a space for their family. So, for instance, having pictures of the family in the classroom is a good way of uh, displaying the families and uh, the different uh, backgrounds that the children are coming from. Um, and I think that the final uh, issue that is important to uh, work on is to really try and establish this collective group identity. So, uh, for instance, classrooms usually have uh, specific names and you can come up with some very specific routines that you do in your classroom. And that is very typical. And this can really help uh, all the children to bond and to feel uh, connected to each other and be part of the classroom. And in that sense, it can really help in building this collective group identity.